Every drop of water you drink has been on an incredible journey, from clouds, to oceans, to rivers and back again. This is the water cycle explained in 5 minutes. Have you ever wondered how water gets from here to here? Well, it all starts with the sun. As the sun heats up the Earth's surface, the water in oceans, lakes and rivers absorbs that energy and turns into vapor. This process is called evaporation. Think of a pot of water boiling on the stove. As the water gets hotter and hotter, it eventually turns into steam. The same thing happens to Earth's water, except it's powered by the sun instead of a stove. But why does the water turn into vapor? It's because of its molecules. Water is made of molecules that are constantly moving. When the sun shines on them, it gives the molecules enough energy to break their bonds and fly off into the air as vapor. Now, where do clouds come in? Well, as the water vapor rises higher and higher into the atmosphere, it starts to cool down. When it reaches a certain temperature, the vapor condenses, meaning it changes back into tiny liquid droplets. These droplets form clouds, which look like this to us. But what's happening to the water is called condensation. At this point, you might be wondering, how does rain happen? Well, as more and more water vapor condenses, the clouds get heavier and heavier. Eventually, the weight of the water droplets or ice crystals becomes too much for the clouds to hold. So they fall back to Earth in the form of precipitation. That means rain, snow, or hail. Let's follow a single drop of water on its journey. After a raindrop falls from a cloud, it could land in a river, a lake, or the ocean. Let's imagine it lands in a river, then it flows along with the current until it reaches the ocean. Some of the water soaks into the ground and becomes groundwater. Eventually, almost all of it makes its way back into the ocean. And once it's there, the whole process starts again. The sun evaporates the water, which forms clouds that produce more rain, which fills rivers that flow into the ocean, which is where our water drop began its journey. This continuous movement of water is essential for life on Earth. It's called the water cycle and it moves water from the Earth's surface to the atmosphere and back again. Now, you know how water moves from clouds to oceans and everything in between. If you want to learn more about the water cycle, click right here. Otherwise, keep watching to see how long it takes for a water molecule to travel around the world. A water molecule can go around the world in as little as one day. That's because water is constantly moving through the water cycle. One day it might be part of a cloud, the next day it could be raining, and then it will evaporate and make its way back to the ocean. But the water cycle isn't just important for the planet, it's also crucial for us humans. We use water for drinking, growing food, cleaning, and countless other things. Without the water cycle, we wouldn't have the water we need to survive. The water cycle is a natural process that happens all around us all the time. It's amazing to think that the water we drink today might have been part of a raindrop millions of years ago. The next time you take a drink of water, remember that it's been on quite the journey to get to you. Like this video if you learned something new and subscribe for more science in minutes. Thanks for watching.